uh, my interpretation of The Shining is that there's many levels to this film. This is like three-dimensional chess, and he's trying to tell us several stories that appear to be separate, but actually are not. And he's doing this both through the overt script that he wrote, he's telling it through tricks um, of the trade, the subliminal imagery and these constant retakes giving him odd angles and things. And he's also uh, telling you uh, through the um, changes that he made to the Stephen King novel. So if you watch those three things, you begin to understand this deeper story. And this deeper story has its uh, birth, I guess, uh, in the idea that uh, Stanley Kubrick was involved with faking the Apollo moon landings. In fact, I contend that 2001 Space Odyssey, in part, was a research and development project for the Apollo footage that was shot. I'm not saying we didn't go to the moon, I'm just saying that what we saw was faked and that it was faked by Stanley Kubrick. And I've had Hollywood uh, uh, special effects people from the 60s and 70s who were front screen projection experts tell me that I absolutely have nailed the Apollo footage as being the result of front screen projection. Uh, just go to any Apollo site and look and you'll see that they, they have to hide the bottom of the screen and you can always see the set screen separation line in every Apollo footage every Apollo image and the video footage that has a background. And Richard Hoagland, the researcher, has looked into the Apollo imagery and he has found all sorts of problems with it because in the sky around the astronauts, he's found reflecting lights and refracting uh, things and, 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 and kind of a junk and geometry and things that are in the sky. And he concluded, wrongly, that there are gigantic alien cities made out of glass. What he's really saying is the reflections of light off the tiny beads uh, on the scotch light screen which is being used in the front screen projection process. And so once I, I nailed the front screen projection process in, uh, inside the Apollo footage, then I became interested in seeing if Kubrick left any clues in the rest of his career uh, to his possible involvement in faking the Apollo moon footage. And I was overjoyed about two years ago when I received the, my Blu-ray copy of The Shining and I put it in my Blu-ray machine and sat down one night to watch it and I realized that all of the things that one could imagine that Stanley Kubrick would have had to go through to fake the Apollo moon footage and there in the movie every time that Stanley deviated from the Stephen King novel, he deviated into those exact questions. You know, what was it like to make a deal with the U.S. government? What was it like to, to accidentally tell someone what you were doing and to watch them possibly have to suffer the consequences of your lack of integrity? What was it like to, uh, to lie to your wife and tell her that you were doing one thing when you were doing another? What was it like when your wife found out what you were really doing? These are the questions that I had long before I'd seen The Shining again after a, maybe an eight or nine year absence. And I did, wasn't sure I was right for the first hour. I wasn't sure that I had actually, you know, I wasn't sure if I was blurring the line between what I wanted to see and what I was seeing. And then at about 58 minutes in the film is the famous scene where Danny's playing with his trucks and he stands up and he's wearing the Apollo 11 sweater with a rocket taking off. Then I knew I had nabbed it and then I started watching the film with an intensity that I don't think I've ever watched a movie before and every line began ringing true. Um, you know, Wendy, that is just so typical of you. Do you, don't you don't you know I have obligations to my employers? Do you have any idea what a contract is? Do you know what an agreement is? Jack Nicholson's whole tirade at, uh, against his wife—that's Stanley. That's uh, Stanley telling his wife that 
you know, after she discovered what he was doing, which was the Apollo footage. No, that's actually not true. If you call the Mount Hood Resort and you ask for room 217, you will find there is no such room. So that's just not true. That statement's not true. And so uh, what uh, Stanley was lying. You know, it's not the reason that he changed the room number from 217 to 237. The reason that he changed it from 217 to 237 was because the room Room 237 in the film is represents the moon landing stage where he worked. And the moon, the standard science textbook said, and they still say, but now with lasers, we've gotten a little better reading, but uh, is, is that the mean distance of the moon from the earth is exactly 237,000 miles. So he changed that so that you would understand that this was the moon room. So Danny stands up, he's got the Apollo 11 sweater on. He begins walking down the hallway towards room 237 and there's a key in the lock and on the key are is the words room and then the word N-O, which is an old uh, acronym for number, so room number 237, except that the only capital letters on the key are R-O-O-M and then the N from the acronym N-O, and if there's only two words that you can come up with that have those letters in them, and that's moon and room. And so on the key, the tag, it says moon room. And that is the moon room. This is where everything happens and none of it's real. And it all has to be lied about. And you can't let anyone know what's really going on in room 237. Uh, and there's many, many other deviations uh, from the book to the movie. It isn't real. The deviations drove Stephen King out of his mind. Uh, he just ranted and ranted for years how much he hated The Shining. And he hated it because he'd given Kubrick all this great source material and Kubrick threw it out. And, and the whole um, idea of this is best exemplified by the scene where Dick Halloran is driving up the highway trying to get to the Overlook during a winter storm and he passes a wreck. And in the wreck, a semi has, has crashed and, 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 and crushed a red Volkswagen. And this is a direct message from Kubrick to King, because in the novel, Jack Torrance's car is a red Volkswagen, but in the movie, it's a yellow Volkswagen. And what Kubrick is saying in that scene is a big F you to Stephen King. He's saying, this is my vehicle, I have wrecked your vehicle, and everybody in the world can see it. And this drove King crazy, and it should have. But what was really going on, and what is just much more deliciously um, uh, fascinating about all of this, is that, in fact, Kubrick was faking the making of the Stephen King novel in order to reveal the idea of what he went through to do the Apollo moon footage.